Have you ever had one of those moments where you know that God did something great and you are just on cloud nine or you heard something that you didn't understand before and now you get it? Uh, you're reading in the Bible and you just really feel like God is talking to you, something to that extent, and you wanted so bad to tell your husband, but you were afraid of their response? Story time. I feel like I need a story time chair. <laughs> Let me see. Anyway, the story goes, I was at work on Friday and I left work early because our Christmas party was the next day. So I needed to go home and do some things to get ready for the party the next day. And on my way home, someone rear-ended me. And I got out of the car and everybody was fine. The driver was fine. I was fine. The cars were fine. And I was so busy. I needed to do a lot of things. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to wait for the police to make a report. I'm not gonna send this to my insurance company. Everything was fine. I went home. Well, the next day I woke up and my neck was stiff and sore. I mean, it was, it was pretty bad. I couldn't move it any direction without having a lot of pain. And so I was so bummed because I wanted so badly to go to this party. My boss, that company, were Christians and they absolutely love Christmas. They pull off the best parties. And so I was just really bummed because I really wanted to go. I finally made the decision to take some ibuprofen and hope that it helped and go to the party anyway. And I thought, well, if it gets bad, I'll just go home. And my husband didn't care one way or the other. He's not a party person and he's quiet and doesn't like to be in crowds and yada, yada, yada. So. He just went along with whatever I wanted. And so we go to the party and again, it was fantastic. The food was wonderful. There was some dancing. Well, I danced. <laughs> he sat and watched. While I was dancing, I could tell that the ibuprofen was wearing off and my neck was starting to get really sore. And I was holding my neck, trying to continue on with having fun. After about an hour, I couldn't take it anymore. So I was like, well, probably should go home, take some more ibuprofen or whatever. And I wanted to thank the owners of the company for, you know, having this party and for the gifts and all that stuff. So I'm holding my neck as I walked up to my boss and I said, thank you so much for the party. And he goes, what's wrong with your neck? And I said, oh, just a little fender bender yesterday. My neck is sore. I think I'm going to go home and take some ibuprofen. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm glad you could come. And as soon as he said that, he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, be healed in Jesus name. And he lifted up. He's like, I'll see you on Monday. And it was literally that fast. And as soon as he said, be healed in Jesus name, I had a warm tingling sensation down my neck and back up and my pain was completely gone completely gone. And I know people who are skeptical, because I am, I am skeptical. People who are skeptical say, yeah, right. It's all in your head. <laughs> Whatever. You can think that. It's fine. I don't care. That's not the point of the video. Um, my point is, I know something happened when he said in Jesus name and my neck was no longer hurting. And I know it was because of that prayer. And I wanted so bad to tell my husband and I couldn't. The people I worked with are Christian. So I leaned over to my friend and I whispered in her ear, God just healed me. And she jumps back and she's like, praise God, da, 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 you know. And uh, the whole time my husband standing there next to me has no idea what just was said. And I didn't let him know. Yeah, so I've had many of those moments in my marriage early on. Uh, if you don't know me, I am Connie. I'm married to Todd. We've been married for almost 32 years, but the first 20 plus years we were unequally yoked. So I make videos telling about my process, about what I, how I lived during those hard years. So I was thinking about this because in my Bible reading, um, I came across the verse about pearls being thrown before swine. And that friend that I leaned over to tell about my healing is the one who reminded me of that scripture way back when. And so that got me thinking about this subject of what do you share 
with your spouse and what do you not share with your spouse? And back then I, I was very timid in sharing anything with my spouse because of that verse, don't throw your pearls before swine. And I took pearls as things that God has done for me, things, good things about God, you know, whatever it might be without actually knowing the context of that scripture. This is the rabbit trail that I went on in to see if I was remembering that scripture correctly because it also made me think of the scripture, let your light shine before men. And so when do we tell our spouses, our unbelieving spouses, about what God's doing in our lives? Or when do we keep silent? I went to the scripture in Matthew. Okay, Matthew 7, verse 1. Judge not, that you be not judged. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. That is a grouping of verses that go together. Verse 6 is not separate from verses 1 through 5. Even though it sounds different, it goes together. The, the sixth verse is not saying that I can't tell my unbelieving spouse or friend or family member about the good things of God, about the holy things of God, about the things that God is doing for me, through me, and with me because he's an unbeliever. It's not saying that. What it's saying is if we judge somebody, I don't care who they are, unbeliever, believer, if we judge somebody based on their actions and those exact actions are what we do ourselves, they, the person we're judging, will judge us back. Just like it says in verse one, judge not that you be not judged. They will judge us back because we're declaring the holy things of God, right? We're declaring that God said you shouldn't lie. So if you're going around lying, they can look at you and say, you're lying too. <laughs> you're being judged by the same measure. And if you're doing this in front of an unbeliever, it's as if you have a log in your eye because you are the one that's supposed to be obedient to it. They don't care. They don't believe. That is throwing what is holy to the dogs. And that is throwing your pearls to swine, right? The pearls being the law or things of God. And if you are throwing that back on them when you yourself don't have it under wraps, that's what it means. So it's not saying, again, it's not saying that we're not allowed to share the things of God. As a matter of fact, we're supposed to let our good works shine, let our light shine before men so that God may be glorified. It's saying that we shouldn't judge them when we ourselves have a lot of work to do in whatever area. So was my friend wrong in telling me that maybe I shouldn't get, because my fear then was he will say something mean about it or that he'll insult me or whatever. And the Bible doesn't say don't share the things of God because they might insult you. What does it say about that? We won't go there because I don't have time. <laughs> so I say share the things that God is showing you. Share the healings if you are healed. Share your, that you're praying for them. Share all the things that God is teaching you about you. Even confess, say you're sorry to them. And I will pray about that. And I will pray for you about that in a loving, kind, humble manner, not in a, I'll pray for you. Do you see what I'm saying? So yes, I believe we are to share, even if they're an unbeliever. We're not throwing pearls before swine. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.